Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Microsoft will pay you to do your web searching through Bing. Toyota's latest infotainment system is powered by Linux. Apple is bringing AR and VR to their devices. And scientific researchers have confirmed a part of Einstein's general theory of relativity that Einstein himself said would never be observed. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories for the week of June 7, 2017. Microsoft Rewards is planning to pay people to use Bing instead of its competitors. People with a Microsoft account can sign up for the rewards program, which gives users points when they purchase an item in the Microsoft Store or, get this, when they search on Bing. These points can later be reimbursed for items. Google still has a stronghold on the search engine market with a close to 86% of all searches being done through their search engine. Bing is in second place with about 10%. The rewards program will have a variety of levels. Level 1 members will be able to earn points for 10 searches a day and level 2 users can earn points for 50 searches per day. Good luck, Bing. Toyota will be the first U.S. automaker to use automotive-grade Linux, also known as AGL. They'll be including it in the 2018 Toyota Camry. AGL is an open-sourced system based on, you guessed it, Linux. It boasts 200 members from various sectors including Toyota, Honda, Mercedes, Qualcomm, Intel, and Samsung. The system is designed as an option to offerings from tech companies like Google and Apple, giving automakers a solid base that they can easily customize and update. The vice president of Toyota says the AGI platform, AGL platform gives drivers greater connectivity and new functionalities at a pace that is more consistent with consumer technology. He's referring to the fact that automakers are notorious for using slow, outdated tech in their homegrown entertainment systems. As a result, consumers prefer higher tech, more current gear like Android Auto and Apple's CarPlay. While automakers have offered these options to give drivers what they want, they generally aren't crazy about giving tech companies like Google and Apple such prominent place in their cars. That's where AGL comes in, returning control to the center console to automakers, while letting them easily update or modify the tech. The tech will eventually come to other Toyota vehicles, as, along with models from sister company Lexus. The system may also appear in vehicles from Mazda and Mercedes and Ford as they and other members keep an eye on the success of the Camry release. Nice. Yay, Linux. Apple CarPlay, that's a thing. Yeah? I didn't even know. I didn't know they had anything that didn't start with I. <laughs> like iCarPlay? <laughs> Apple iCar. That's what I would have expected. No, that's that's still coming. They're still working on the car. <laughs> no. Oh, that's how they did it. Yeah. No, that's Came weird. out with the phone first. What I like about this is that this story sheds light on the fact that we don't always recognize that what we're interacting with is Linux. Mm -hmm. Right. And Linux is such a prominent player in the OS market for embedded devices and servers. The internet itself is run on Linux. Um, and you look at that dash and you think, that's just the interface for the uh, you know the whole system the the phone the AM FM radio the sat satellite disc USB whatever super good looking and it's Linux 
under so the cool. hood. We had a under comment. The hood. We had a See comment. Was that? it last uh, week that somebody's ATM we, oh, was? Yeah. It was run by Linux. It was in right. the UK, I think, and Scotland. Ah, there you Scotland. go. So uh, that uh, that's another example of you know. Uh, so the ATM embedded machine running Linux. Good we job. We don't always recognize it. He, he go it. Linux. Well done. Yeah. Well, for the win. Yay. Apple may be the biggest tech company in the world, but some of the biggest tech stories in recent years haven't involved Apple much at all. Amazon redefined the concept of a personal assistant by freeing it from the phone and creating a standalone speaker that you could talk to in your home. Myriad, myriad companies, none of them Apple, have been fighting over the future of virtual reality, augmented reality, and everything in between. And now everyone is talking about machine learning with Google and Facebook leading the charge. Yet on Monday, at its annual developer conference, Apple announced new efforts in all three areas at the same time. The company is bringing augmented reality to the iPhone and iPad, while virtual reality is coming to the Mac. And you can soon find Siri inside a standalone speaker for the home. At the same time, Apple is sharing machine learning tools with developers while being more open about its efforts. Like so many of Apple's best ideas, someone else thought of them first. It's just that Apple believes it can make them better. These are the technologies that some of the world's biggest technology companies believe will define the future of how we interact with our computers. Not through mechanical interfaces, but more natural human experiences. Now that Apple thinks so too, it's simply a question of whether their slick software and massive customer base will allow the company to leapfrog its competitors despite their late start. I believe they will do it. Think they're going to do it? I think mm -hmm. so. They're Apple. That must be infuriating when you're a creator and you yeah. invent or at least build upon something in such a way that it's really your baby. Yeah. And then have a company like Apple come in and like, hey, release their it. version and it's better. At the same time, I almost wish like Google, Apple, like all these companies could have like a baby or something and just make like the ultimate like <laughs> smart thing. I Google. The I, the <laughs> I Google you or something. I don't know. But really, like, there's just so many amazing people out there with so many amazing ideas. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, I wish, I wish you could, like, put your minds together and make something amazing mm -hmm. without having to worry about company constraints. Because, like, I, I, I was watching the Apple show the other day, the Apple show, <laughs> um, the conference the other day, and it was really neat. Because, you know, like, the, um, the little Apple speaker thing, it looks really neat. It's very... But doesn't it feel it's like... So yeah, but everything yeah. they do is so going to do it well. Slick. Yeah, but at the same time, you already have a like Google Home and you have like all these other things, right? So right. it's just like, but this is Siri and this is mm -hmm. so and and Alexa. Are not they going to fight now? Like, if you have two different speakers, are they going to like fight each other? Wouldn't that be neat? If that'd that could be awesome. to the death. I would watch. I thought I see. I th I'm going to say it's morbid, but I'd watch that short film. <laughs> like that. That would be amazing. <laughs> People are going to have kids named Siri and Alexa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, please don't. If you're thinking about it, stop, stop yourself. Now. Do not even procreate at this point. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. <laughs> don't do it. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Okay. Albert Einstein predicted that whenever light from a distant star passes by a closer object, gravity acts as kind of a magnifying lens, brightening and bending the distant, star, the distant starlight. Yet, in a 1936 article in the journal Science, he added that because stars are so far apart, there is no hope of observing this phenomenon directly. Now, an international research team has done just that, as described in the article, which will be released this, in this Friday's publication of Science. The study is believed to be the first report of a particular type of Einstein's gravitational microlensing by a star other than the Sun. Terry Oswalt of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University explains... When a star in the foreground passes exactly between us and a background star, gravitational microlensing results in a perfectly circular ring of light, a so-called Einstein ring. The group obser observed a much more likely scenario. Two objects were slightly out of alignment and therefore an asymmetrical version of an Einstein ring formed. The ring and its brightening were too small to be measured, but its asymmetry caused the distant star to appear off-center from its true position. This part of Einstein's prediction is called astronomic lensing, and this is the first time it's been observed in a star other than the Sun. Amazing. 
Thanks for watching the Category 5.tv newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Duranis.